Hello, this is Abbott Austin for another edition of Talk Lexio, where we do Lexio Vina on a biblical passage, and we'll use tomorrow's Mass's first reading. The first reading from tomorrow's Mass is from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. So we're going to do a Lexio Vina on Jeremiah 31, verses 31 through 34. Um, before we get going, though, I'm in a new setting. I know I found the room in the monastery. Uh, to do this from him actually might be a better uh, arrangement than in my office but as uh, i think i might have mentioned last time we're under construction and so uh i've been uh, in a way have to kicked out of my office so i'm in finding new places to do this uh this broadcast okay so i'll go through the four steps alexia divina to uh, read the tentative attentively with faith and paying attention to what strikes you Second, meditating on the passage as thinking it over. Third, praying from that meditation, offering a prayer, a petition from that, and then resting in the Lord in contemplation, the fourth step. To begin all these steps, let us now pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, open our hearts and our minds to understand your scriptures through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I'll read the passage twice. Again, Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord. For I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. So again, pay attention to what the passage is saying. I'll read it another time. It's a very beautiful passage from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord. For I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. So what grabbed your attention uh, from that passage? That's the question you want to ask. Now, um, there's a lot of things in this. We've got a very beautiful passage. I want to go through just uh, quickly three different things you might notice and meditate on, think about, ponder. And they have to do especially with this idea of this new covenant that is placed, uh, involves have, having God's law placed on our, within us and then written on our hearts. Right. So there's something interior this new covenant will bring about an interior renewal, right? And this is um, in New Testament passages, uh, they're saying this has come about through Christ and the sending of the Holy Spirit. So we've been renewed from within in this new covenant, right? And so what does it mean? This interior renewal means that we now want God's ways from within, from the heart, right? So this is as opposed to, you know, we know God's ways and we have to do them. We don't really want to. But we have to do God's ways because that's what's right and so we're obliged. No, God's going to offer us this interior renewal so that we actually want to do God's uh, will. Uh, we'll still experience in this life, and this in a way that, that wanting God's will be complete in the next life in heaven. Uh, in this life, we, we start to have it though. God renews our hearts so we want his ways. We still experience part of us not wanting God's ways, so there is a struggle at times. But we already have this wanting to do what God wants, not just having to do it, feeling it just simply obliged, but also wanting to. So that's one thing you can think about in this. 
Another thing to meditate on here in this passage is what is the law, right? So through the prophet Jeremiah, God is saying, I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. So what is this law? What is the law that's being written uh, on our hearts? Well, um, there's a lot to think about there, a lot to meditate on. Here you can think of the law, uh, perhaps in a very simple way, as how to live, right? So um, a law is telling you how to live your life, right? How to conduct yourself, right? So the law is how to live. Or in other words, then it's a, a way of living. And then um, if it's a way of living, well, it's God's way of living, right? So it's how to live, it's a way of living, it's God's way of living. And so in a sense, it's God himself, because God is life, God is living, uh, life itself, right? So the law ultimately has like the, these rich layers to it. Uh, it's how we should live our lives. And when we live this way, uh, we're really living as God lives in a certain sense, as much as human beings can do that. So that leads into a third point that can be meditated on, and it's that um, the way we know God is by living in his way, right? So, um, you know, later on in the passage, it says, uh, speaks of knowing the Lord, how to know the Lord. Well, how do we know the Lord? We know the Lord when we live by his law, that is, when we live according to his way, right? Um, so this is something to think about. Coming to know the Lord, we know the Lord with our minds, our intellects, right? We know the Lord, but how do you? How does our mind come to know the Lord? Can't our mind, our minds, know the Lord uh, simply just you know? No matter how we live, we just think about it, we figure it out. Or does coming to know the Lord with your mind involve also living according to the ways of the Lord? It does, right? That's a biblical teaching. That's a uh, traditional church teaching. To come to really know God, uh, you have to be living in a certain way, right? And so having the law written in our hearts, wanting to do God's will, living according to God's ways, there is really all that's necessary in order to know God. It's when we do that, over time, we come to know in this very a deep, profound, and personal way who God is as we walk in his ways, right? So there's a lot to think about there. So those are three things to meditate on. And when you do that, um, this meditation, you come to some insights, and then from that, you want to then see what's good and right, and offer then a prayer. The third step, Alexia, may offer a prayer uh, to the Lord, asking for some of the good things you've seen in your meditation. So I'll offer an example of that, I'll offer a prayer myself, but I invite you to do one of your own. So let's now pray, or uh, offer such a prayer right now. Lord, I ask you to deepen within my heart my desire to do your will so that I may be faithful to you and close to you and know you by living in your ways through Christ our Lord. Amen. And then the fourth and final step of Lexi Divina is to um, simply rest in the Lord, which is brought about by wanting what God wants, right? By praying for something good, you want what God wants. You align your will with his and you experience a closeness with the Lord. Let's now um, pause for a moment, just observe some few moments of a kind of contemplative rest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for those who joined me or will join me later. Uh, may God bless you, and may you have a blessed fifth Sunday of Lent. Know of our prayers here and pray for us as well. God bless.